Live from your news leader, this is WTAJ News at 5. You heard it, strong storms moving through parts of our region tonight, bringing some powerful downpours. Several watches were also in effect a short time ago, but is the threat over? We're going to send it back to our meteorologist, Mike Dole, for a closer look at the radar and what we can expect tonight. Mike? Yeah, for some of us, actually, it's a quite uh, nice evening, but some are still holding on to a strong and uh, a strong downpour and some strong thunderstorms up towards northern Center County and all toward really just south of uh, Renovo. So lots of lightning, heavy downpours, and some gusty winds for our northern counties. But you can see most of us right now are beginning to dry up. As you look down towards the south, between Blair County, southern Huntington County, northern Bedford County, and also parts of Fulton County, we're about to see some very strong downpours, some flooding downpours possible, and some very strong and gusty winds. And that will last for a couple of minutes, then move on off. As we zoom on out, we still have that severe thunderstorm watch issued for uh, all of our counties here in pink until 8 o'clock this evening. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning out towards Pittsburgh, but for us here, no severe storms. But we, uh, at the moment, we did have some earlier today going through Clearfield and Center County. As you look at our future track, there will be some showers and storms for this evening. Then as you go into overnight hours, partly to mostly cloudy, maybe a few stray showers every so often, but we will be a bit drier for tonight. Our temperatures right now, 79 in Indiana, Punxsutawney at 80, Clearfield 78, Huntington 81, and Bedford 81 degrees for this uh, evening. Compared to yesterday at this time, most of us are actually a little bit warmer. It is a warmer day, but when you do see that heavy rain come by, it does knock us down quite a bit like Indiana and also Johnstown. For tonight, partly to mostly cloudy, a few lingering showers for tonight, 62 in Altoona, Dubois 60, Clearfield 61, and Huntington 64 degrees for tonight. The next four days, things are going to improve and be much, much better. 78 for a high on Saturday, but very low dew points. Should be a nice refreshing day. That will continue for our Sunday, partly to mostly, uh, partly to mainly sunny for our Sunday, high near 80. Then by Monday, that's when we turn a bit more steamy and tracking a few more showers and storms for next week. I'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Mike. The Clearfield County Planning and Community Development Office wants to address the need for safe, affordable housing in their region. Yeah, it all starts with the purchase of a blighted property. Our Allison Gens joins us live from Clearfield to tell us more about their plans. Allison? Yeah, John, Amanda, according to a countywide study done in 2012, 46% of renters in Clearfield County are paying more than 30% of their income toward rent. Now the county is taking properties like the one you see behind me and turning them into more affordable rental options. This house has sat vacant for three years on Daisy Street Extension in Clearfield. After it was condemned, the county took control of the property, which will get new life as low-income apartments. We want it energy efficient and we want it, we want it to meet code and we want it to be safe for the individuals that are moving into it. This will be the first time the county has taken on a housing project like this. Lisa Kabalik says the 2019 fair market value for a two bedroom apartment in the county is nearly $700 a month, including utilities. This would be a family earning over $30,000 a year. Um, and while our median is 36,000, we have those families that actually qualify to be renting these apartments. The other unit in the house would be three bedrooms and have a rent around $900 a month. And the county will use a $60,000 grant through the Pennsylvania Housing and Finance Agency to rehabilitate the property. And if it's successful, they would like to try this project on other houses in the county. In Clearfield, I'm Allison Gans, WTAJ News. Thanks, Allison. Today at the Center County Courthouse, the first ever candidates graduated from the county's drug court. 24 year old Sidney Trinka and 27 year old Giovanni Mazzotta presented with their certificates for completing the drug court program. It was started in Center County in January 2018 as a rehabilitation option for those with a drug addiction. One graduate told us how the program changed her life. Two years ago, I never thought I'd be standing here. I really thought I'd be. Um, either in jail or dead. So it feels awesome to be standing here with everybody I love and all the friends I've made. Um, I'm just, I'm just really happy to be here. 
The county's president, Judge Pamela Ruest, says that they currently have 17 people in the program and may get up to 25 in the future. Terry Sandusky will be taken from his prison cell in Greene County to a Center County courtroom next month for a new sentence. Earlier this year, a state appeals court ruled mandatory minimums were improperly applied to his case. Last month, the Supreme Court denied Sandusky the chance to argue for a new trial. But Wednesday, a judge set the resentencing hearing for September 23rd. It's not clear if Sandusky will see much of a change from his current sentence of 30 to 60 years for sexually abusing 10 boys. Well, as uh, summer vacation season continues, the Central PA Convention and Visitors Bureau is looking to learn more about tourists that come to Center County and what brought them. Our Evan Hinckley joined us now live from State College. So, Evan, tell us how exactly are they gathering this information? Well, good evening, John and Amanda. The Visitors Bureau asked professors at Penn State to further study the tourist industry here. So back in May, they started a survey that they hope will give them a greater glimpse into the county's tourism industry. What we're trying to do here is better understand the profile of who these visitors are and the economic impact of the visitor spending. To do that, Assistant Professor of Tourism Management Ashley Schroeder is sending out folks to give surveys at different hotels and special events that draw a crowd, like Arts Fest, the People's Choice Festival, and Phillipsburg Heritage Days. They've also given surveys at attractions like the Berkey Creamery and the Arboretum. In total, they plan on going to between 20 and 30 sites throughout the county. So far, we've collected around 300 surveys. That's not enough to draw any conclusions just yet, but starting this fall, Ashley and others will look at the data and report back to the Visitors Bureau. It's the demographics of, of the visitors who are coming that we are really anxious to learn about, where they come from. Which can help them pinpoint what areas need a better marketing campaign. The survey itself is randomly given to anyone 18 or older and has about 30 questions, asking folks what brings them to Center County, where they're from, how satisfied they are, and most importantly, would they come back? Repeat visitors are really what makes a destination. Um, you can't, you're not going to thrive and succeed as a tourism destination if you're really only getting people one time and they've sort of checked you off their list. We need to whet their appetite about all the great things there are to do here and get them coming back frequently. Now, in addition to that, uh, I'll explain tonight at 6, basically, a YH is also an important metric that's measured on this survey, along with location, as here in Center County, there's a stark contrast between the downtown districts and also the outer lying rural areas. I'll explain more on that, about that coming up again here at 6 o'clock. But for now, reporting live here in State College, Evan Hinckley, WTAJ News. Thanks, Evan. The Kerwinsville Area High School has announced a new coach for the Golden Tide football team. James Thompson, who is a Kerwinsville graduate and former Tide player, will be the new head coach. This comes after the longtime coach Andy Ivanko lost his battle with ALS in early June. Ivanko had coached for the Golden Tide for more than 20 years. The first game is Friday, August 23rd against the Elk County Catholic School in St. Mary's. Now people in the Altoona business community are mourning the loss of a business owner who took her own life last month. Now her husband and friends are speaking out, saying she and other business owners were being harassed by people within their community. Our Colleen Knudsen joins us now live with more on this story. Colleen. Well, John and Amanda, Becky Hoover opened Trends by Poppy in Altoona about two years ago, but her husband, Ken Hoover, tells me even before they opened the shop, they started getting bullied by other business owners in the area. He says at one point, people were in their store passing out flyers from another business that has similar products, which he and his wife thought was odd. The harassment got to a point that Becky got legal help and had a cease and, uh, cease and desist order delivered to one of the business owners, which her husband says made things worse. Ken tells me a lot of the harassment was through social media, and one post in particular broke his wife's spirit. Somebody's criminal history was posted on Facebook. You just happen to have the same name as my wife. And uh, to, to lead people to believe that this was my wife, that had this history and then that tore her apart. 
A big question is why Becky killed herself? Was there an underlying illness or financial burdens? Or was it because of the bullying and continuous harassment? Ken has something he wants to share about the note she left him. That's tonight at 11. But for now, in studio, I'm Colleen Knudsen, WTAJ News. All right, thank you, Colleen. Well, PennDOT, state police, and the safety officials are reminding folks about the dangers of children and pets left in vehicles. 52 children died in hot cars in 2018, and officials say as of August 1st, 26 children have died this year. A demonstration showed just how quickly the inside of a vehicle can turn deadly, even on days it doesn't feel too warm outside. They also stress it doesn't matter how old the child is. Children, even older children, toddlers, people think they would be safe in a vehicle for a certain amount of time. They're not safe. And if you have to bring them in the store, I know it might be inconvenient to shop or have lots of children at your feet. But if you can leave them at home, if you cannot, please take them inside with you. The same for animals. It's safer to leave them at home. If you do happen to witness a child or a pet in an unattended hot car, State police ask you to contact them so they can evaluate the situation. Folks in Blair County have a chance to enjoy a sweet treat and help a good cause tomorrow. The Farm City Committee is hosting their Cones for a Cause event at Richie's Dairy in Martinsburg. A single scoop cone is going to be on sale for a dollar all day long. The proceeds will be used to buy milk for distribution by the American Rescue Workers. And the Sharp Tones will perform from 6 to 9. Vendors across the region are invited to a two-day arts and heritage festival. This is at uh, Dumans Dam Park in Cambria County. The Laurel Highlands Historical Village is hosting the event on September 21st and 22nd. Arts and craft vendors who sign up will be able to showcase and market their products. The festival also aims to celebrate the history of Pennsylvania. Multiple open slots are still available and nonprofit groups can set up for free. For more information on how you can register, you can go ahead to our website. We are centralpa.com. Ahead on WTAJ News at 5, we're learning more about a concern call the police from the suspected El Paso gunman's mother. We'll tell you her concerns and how the attorneys for the family describe that call after the break. And 30 street signs are taken from a local township. Hear why it could affect residents in the area in more ways than one. That's at 530.